And Jesus was casting out a devil in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, on this third Sunday, we already tie in. Some of you wouldn't have heard it last week, but last week I spoke of the gospel transfiguration of our Lord. Our Lord goes up to Mount Tabor and he's transfigured and his face shines as the sun. His garments shine as white as the snow. And we use that to remind ourselves of how we have to transfigure, change our soul with the light of grace. And that we, we spoke about the preparation for making a good confession. How do you, even before you get to the, uh, the sin bin, the box, before you even get there, what do you do to prepare? We spoke about this last week. So today, using this, this beautiful uh, work of our Lord where he expels, he exercises this poor man, he casts out the devil from him, he removes his possession, can remind us of the same sort of thing. How do we exercise, uh, not exercise, exorcise, how do we get rid of the devil's uh, chains, the devils who has put our souls in slavery. Well, actually, we give ourselves over to the devil when we sin. So we speak of today of this question of getting rid of the devil. Our Lord ejects, he casts out the devil in today's gospel. How do we do the same? Obviously, the answer is making a good sacrament of confession. So today we can look at that first part, breaking those bonds of, of sin and of slavery, because when someone is in enslaved, some, sorry, so when someone is in sin, especially mortal sin, they are actually a slave. They're not free. They are a slave to the devil. They are in bondage, and they need the grace of God to break those sin, uh, that chains of sin. So therefore, today we speak of the, the first, let's say the most important part of every Confession, which is contrition. Normally when we look at a sacrament like penance, you have contrition, it's necessary. You have the confessing of your sins, you have to say the sins properly. And then you have the third part, which is the satisfaction or, or doing the penance that is given to you. Those are the three parts of a, a good integral confession. Today we're just going to look at that first one because in a sense it's the most important, the most necessary. You cannot have a good confession. You can confess them perfectly. You can do the penances given to you. But if you don't have that contrition, neither mortal nor venial sin can be forgiven. There is no forgiveness of sin without a real contrition. So let's look a little bit at the qualities. What must, a, what must my sorrow be? And this is a very important point because sometimes people go to one extreme or the other extreme. Too little, too much, if, if that can be said. They, they confuse this idea. Contrition must be firstly internal. Internal, that is to say, your contrition, the essential thing, it must be inside the soul. It's not simply, I am crying, or my face is sad, or my voice is sad, or I have a difficulty. You know, sometimes a priest hears people in confessional and they, they are weeping, or they are very sad voice, or they're very heartbroken, these are all good things. But what really is most important, firstly, is that internal sorrow of the soul, and the detestation of sin. I am sorry for my sins, that's an act of my will, and I do not want to do them again, I, I hate them. It's the only thing you're allowed to hate on this earth, you're not allowed to hate other people, you are allowed and required to hate sin. So it's not this external manifestation of sorrow, the priest is not looking for your tears. He doesn't need to, to reach through the grill and, and taste the salty tears. No, he just needs to know that you have done your best to have a sorrow, an internal sorrow for the sin. And this is something we need to talk about. Because sometimes people think, they say, Father, I can't confess, or I'm having difficulty confessing because I don't feel sorry. They always use this word feel. I don't feel sorry. And usually the priest will answer, you don't need to feel sorry. You need to be sorrowful. You need to have that desire of your will that says, my will turned against God in committing a sin. My free will chose to turn its back on God. 
And now, for that contrition, that sorrow, I turn myself back to God. I freely use my will, and I have a sorrow. And you say, well, yeah, but I don't feel sorry. How can I have a sorrow, but I don't feel sorry? Well, this opens up a whole uh, can of worms, a whole Pandora's box of what is feeling and what is emotion and what... Uh, Basically, to make it very simple, your emotions, your feelings, they don't always follow your intellect and your will. They should do. But because of original sin, our emotions, our feelings, they're not always correct. They make mistakes. You know that. If you think about it for a second, people fall in love with the wrong person, someone that's very bad for them, and they fall in love with them. And it's like their emotions are wrong. Oh, yes, but I love this person. Well, your love is wrong. Sorry, it's not a true love. It's not following something that is good. Or you wake up in the morning for no apparent reason, you're just angry at this other person. Or you're in a bad mood. Well, why? You just woke up. Nothing has happened. Well, I just am. That just shows you your emotions are, are, are not under... You look at any child. You bring a child into a supermarket or into a restaurant and they start making a big fuss and screaming, I want this. And they, they, they make it sound like, you know, they will die if they don't get that dessert. Well, that's just emotions out of control. I mean, anybody who studies human nature for five minutes can see our emotions are uh, disordered. And they, so when you go to confession, you have a sorrowful sin, it would be good, and it's something we should work on, that our emotions should follow that and be sorry. Yes, absolutely. To have that feeling of sorrow, good. But it is not dependent upon that. You know, it suffices that we hate our sin, we detest the sin, we have a sorrow for having offended God. That's it. That's it. Someone can be sorry and their emotions don't follow, unfortunately. That's the way it is. That's why you can look in the Mass in your missiles. Maybe you have that. You have certain prayers or Masses. Prayers to be said for the compunction of heart. Prayers to be said for the gift of tears. There's, there's, there's something you can put in the Mass extra prayers for the gift of tears, that our tears would come for sorrow for our sins. Because right now we're sorry, but we're dry. We're, it's not enough emotion. Yeah, that's true. So don't, don't get confused that the contrition does not equal the same thing as tears. It, it should do. It would be very good. In a perfect world, yes. When your soul is more ordered, you're, you're closer to our Lord, you're, you're functioning as more of a, a, a properly aligned human being. Yes, absolutely. But do not does not depend upon that. So you have to have that act of the will. I want to be sorry. I know this sin is wrong. Sin is the worst thing in the world. I hate it. I am sorry for this. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. So firstly, your sin must, your contrition must be internal. I, it's an internal thing, not external. Secondly, it must be universal. Okay. I am sorry for all my sins, obviously, especially the mortal sins. You cannot say, I did these 10 sins. These nine are really embarrassing. I'm really ashamed of them. This 10th one, that person deserved it. Or I'm not, I'll do it again. No problem. You know, I'm not even going to try. That 10th sin, I really like. I'm sort of attached to it. It's my little, uh, my little baby. I like it. I don't want to give it up. I like that one. No, no, no. You have to have a universal sorrow. I detest all my sins. Especially speaking, especially of mortal sins, of course. Of course. So that's sort of an obvious thing. You can't, you can't pick and choose which sins you're sorry for. You have to be sorry for them all. Thirdly, and lastly, let's say, your contrition should be supernatural. To say, I am sorry for these sins for the right reasons, <laughs> not just natural reasons. I'm not sorry because I, somebody saw me do this sin. Uh, this person's angry at me for the sin. I got punished for this sin. I'm embarrassed by this sin. No, no, no. Those are hu natural human reasons. Let's say earthly reasons. We need to have a sorrow that is supernatural. I have offended God who has loved me above all. I, who, who I should love above all things, who is the greatest possible good on this earth and in eternity. I've offended God's honor, who has done nothing but good for me. That's a supernatural uh, sorrow. Okay, that's something important to remember. And you can go into from there, perfect, imperfect contrition. Okay, perfect just means we should always strive 
we should always set our goal should be perfect contrition. That is to say, I detest sin. I am sorry for the sin because I've offended God who is all good and all loving and all merciful. God, the Father who has created me from eternity and brought me into this world and given me all good things, I've offended him. And God, the Son who, who was born, who lived, who suffered and died as an act of love for my soul, I've offended him. Or God, the Holy Ghost, who continually enlightens my mind and gives me graces and sanctifies my soul, I've offended him. This is this perfect contrition. We, 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 we do it for the right reasons, for the highest possible sorrow. That's very good. There is a secondary con con contrition which we call imperfect, but it's still very good. It's perfectly fine to use in the confessional, of course. That's to say, I am sorry for my sins because they, have, they will cause me to go to hell. They, are, um, uh, they cause me to lose heaven, okay? Fear of hell, loss of heaven, sin is very ugly. These are all supernatural, but not the highest. They're still, they still work with a good, with a good uh, use of the sacrament of, of penance. They work fine. Okay? You can hate sin because it's something bad, because it has consequences, because it has eternal punishment. Those are all good reasons. It's, it's not as good as the first, as the perfect contrition, but it still works. Obviously, perfect contrition is much better, okay, obviously. But either of them are, can be used for a good confession, of course. So, in order to obtain this contrition, we, we, we have this time of Lent, it's sort of these 40 days of Lent. We're not quite at the halfway mark where we're already, you know, some people go regularly, but regardless if you go regularly to confession or not, you have these 40 days to really dig down deep, to, to, to look at your sins, especially every day. Usually we combine it with your, your daily, maybe your evening prayers, your daily rosary. You, you take a few minutes at the end of that and you think over your day. What have I done today? What have I not done? What have I done in word and deed? What have I done that I need to be sorry for? And begin already practicing that, that contrition, which is a, 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 great, a great help to us. So, my dear faithful, just a, a lot of details there. Just to remember that contrition, which is so important. Imagine how many families, how many individuals would have good relationships with their family and their, their friends or others if they had that contrition. They thought of their sins and how sorry they should be for their faults and not what everyone else has done wrong. What have I done to offend God or to hurt my neighbor? All saints who are in heaven have understood this truth of a beautiful contrition for our sins. Let us therefore think about this today and throughout the rest of Lent that God will pardon our sins and wash away. He will exercise, he will cast out these devils of, which are in us by sin and give us a place in his kingdom for all eternity. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.